Metal Jesus, and I'm back again to do another Hidden Gems video, but this time we're gonna cover the mighty PlayStation 1 fantastic console, and there are literally hundreds of great games for this system, but there are some that not a lot of people know about. And I'm gonna change that, gonna show you a bunch of cool games here. Let's take a look. Omega Boost is the first hidden gem I'd like to talk about, and it was developed by Polyphony Digital, the creators of the Gran Turismo series. Now this is a 3D shooter where you control a mech that goes back in time to battle a computer AI gone rogue. Like you've never heard that before. Yet despite the cheesy plot and budget title looks, it's actually a really fun game with 19 different zones to battle in, multiple mission objectives, there's a free floating 360 degree battle, you customize and upgrade your weapons, and a bunch more. This game kind of feels like a mix of Robotech and Wing Commander. It's pretty cool. Silhouette Mirage is a 2D side-scrolling platformer and shooter. Now think Mega Man whacked out on drugs and you get a good idea what this game is like. This was developed by Treasure and they are known for creating a lot of unusual games like Gunstar Heroes, Guardian Heroes, and Ikaruga. It was brought to the US by Working Designs based off the original Sega Saturn game. Similar to Ikaruga, all enemies are one of two classes. They're either Silhouette or Mirage. Notice that as I turn my character on the screen, I present a different color to the on-screen enemy. Depending on the side you attack an enemy with, determines if you damage it or not. This game has colorful sprites, silly enemies, and huge boss battles. Now, I've only just started playing this game, but I can already tell it's gonna be a lot of fun and very challenging. From the developer Insomniac, which is the creator of the awesome Ratchet & Clank series, comes a surprisingly well-made first-person shooter called Disruptor. Disruptor has 13 unique sci-fi levels, 20 different enemies, 9 guns, and psionic mind weapons. I think probably the most standout feature for this game is just the rock solid frame rate. Now there is a lot of fog and a lot of pop in, but it plays surprisingly well. But most importantly, this game has some of the worst, and I mean the worst, full motion video. It's so bad, it's funny. <laughs> so what's the mission? It's a high pressure IQ test. They want to see if you can nail the bad guys without blowing away any of the hostages. Hostages? Mm. In the words of your brother, being a stormer, it's more than just kicking ass. Show us you got what it takes and then maybe, just maybe, we'll send you out on a real mission. <laughs> Ghost in the Shell is based on one of the best-selling Japanese anime and mangas of all time, and it happens to be one of my all-time favorites. I love Ghost in the Shell. Well, that's good news for me because Ghost in the Shell on the PlayStation 1 just happens to be a really fun and well-made game. It places you in control of those cute little robotic tanks known as Fuchikomas. You pilot a Fuchikoma through 12 missions in full 3D levels with their unique go anywhere capabilities. And, and what I mean by that is that these little Fuchikomas have the ability to leap or walk on floors, obviously, but also walls, ceilings, and any other flat surface you can find. The game also includes over 10 minutes of original animation and the original voice actors come back to do their roles. If you are a fan of Ghost in the Shell, you should find a copy of this. Hot Wheels Turbo Racing is a total hidden gem on the PlayStation 1. Now, those of you who have played Rumble Racing on the PlayStation 2 might find this game very familiar. Both games have a similar crazy power-up system and weapons. They also have really inventive levels and the ability to perform stunts to build up your boost. I have probably put more time into this racing game than any other PlayStation 1 game. 
Going through here, unlocking levels and new cars is just so much fun. I really, really like this game a lot. Some people may be surprised to see Bushido Blade on this list. And that's because if you were into fighting games back in the PlayStation 1 era, you knew about this game. It was so unique and interesting. But I do feel over time, the series has kind of been forgotten. Bushido Blade is a fighting series by Squaresoft where the goal is to create a realistic fighting experience. One critical blow can end the match in seconds. You'll notice that there are no life bars or time limits. One or two players will choose which of the six warriors to play using eight different ancient Japanese swords and weapons. You control your stance and then very carefully go in for the kill. Often matches only last a few seconds. I mean, it's very intense and incredibly satisfying. I thought I would mention the sequel, which added 12 more warriors for a total of 20, new weapons, stances, and more story modes for each character. I've actually owned Apocalypse starring Bruce Willis for quite a while, but it was only recently that I took the brave step of putting it in the PlayStation 1, and what do you know? The game's actually really fun. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I like Bruce Willis as much as probably anybody's legally allowed to, but for whatever reason, this game just looks like a really bad budget title. But instead, it's a surprisingly fun run and gun shooter. You take control of Bruce Willis, who battles enemies through huge 3D levels with multiple weapons and upgrades. Now, the controls are simple and the gameplay is fast and furious. And of course, it's Bruce Willis, so there are lots of cheesy one-liners. Lock and load. Now, this game's not gonna win any awards or anything, but it's definitely a really decent little hidden gem, and it's created by Neversoft, which went on to make the Tony Hawk games, so it's pretty high quality. Strikers 1945 is based on an arcade vertical scrolling shooter. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a big shmup fan, and of course I had to include one in this video. This is a good one. You can play six different high-tech planes, each with their own special attacks and defense, and your bomb is the ability to call in swarms of fighter planes to assist you. This is a good game for players of all skill levels, especially fans of Raiden. Stuff blows up real good in Strikers 1945. I was really surprised to learn that Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness on the PlayStation 1 is actually a really good game. This is a 3D adventure game where you control Miss Pac-Man through 180 mazes on four different worlds. The game adds in adventure elements like unlocking gates, jumping, puzzle solving, and more. Yet it still feels like classic Pac-Man with only four directions and no buttons to push. And yes, at its core, you were still trying to munch pellets, but a lot more thinking and planning goes into solving the specific mazes, all while trying to avoid your enemies. As an added bonus, the original arcade version is included as well. Einhander is one of my favorite shoot-em-ups in my entire collection. This is a stunning 3D side-scrolling shooter by Squaresoft released in 1998 that many people consider to be a masterpiece and quite possibly one of the best shooters ever made. The game takes place during a futuristic war between the Earth and Moon where you pilot the Einhander spacecraft that has this manipulator arm that allows you to collect gun pods dropped by enemies that you destroy. This game has mid-level and end-level bosses, tons of challenge for pretty much every skill level, and God, just look at those graphics. I mean, this is awesome for the PlayStation 1. I think the thing that sets it apart is just the amount of polish that went into this game. I mean, who knew that Squaresoft, the creators of Final Fantasy and all those role-playing games that everyone loves, would be able to come into the shooter market and frankly, just kick ass. The PlayStation 1 has a ton of great platforming games, but Heart of Darkness is a stunner. This game was developed by the creators of Another World, or Out of This World as it's called in North America. 
The first thing you'll notice is just the beautiful hand-drawn graphics and animation. I mean, this game literally has thousands of 2D animated frames. There are 176 locations to adventure and platform through, as well as over 50 minutes of full motion video spread across two CDs. You climb, swim, swing, and jump through eight fantastic worlds solving puzzles, avoiding traps, and battling enemies. The level of polish and attention to detail in this platforming game is really unlike most other games. And it truly is a hidden gem. All right, well, that's just some of the hidden gems that I think are worth collecting on the PlayStation 1. But you know what? There are so many great games that this is going to be part one. I'm actually going to do another part two uh, video coming here in just a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thanks for subscribing. Take care.